Hey guys, welcome back to another live tutorial. This is another painting for a client that I'm doing. Client, coworker, buyer, whatever you want to call them. And it's actually a remake of another painting I had, but you wanted it done with a little bit different colors. And I've done a tutorial on this before, but it was a post commentary, so I figured it would be better to do a live commentary because it's a little bit more updated, I'm a little bit better of a painter, and I'm sure I forgot things in my old tutorial for it. So, let's begin. So this is gonna be my reflected heart painting. It's gonna be this heart and it's also gonna be reflected down here with some trees and stuff. So the first thing I wanna do is mark my stencil. And it's especially important on these because these aren't gonna have lips, they're not gonna be as heavy and you wanna make sure you get exactly where that heart is because you're more worried about the shape on this compared to like a planet stencil. So since there's no lip on this, I'm gonna make sure to spray directly down on it to get that mist. So you can't even see my, my can of paint in frame. That's how far away I'm holding it. That's, that's literally all we need. It gives that very faint outline. So she wanted this done with purple and blue. So we are going to make it purple and blue. Usually you want to go lightest to darkest whenever you're going to make a texture for something. But since purple and blue are about the same darkness, they're about the same tone, I'm going to just add them in whatever order. kind of following the outline of that part, just so it's easier to put my stencil back on later. And hold on, I just forgot something that I should have done for my stencil, so be right back. This is the glory of doing it live, you guys get to see all my scripts and everything, so hold on. All right, and we're back, sorry about that. What I did was, I added a little handle to my stencil. This will make it way easier to pick up layer. Like I said, this doesn't have a lip on it, so you'd have to try and move it up with a pal knife, and I've screwed up many paintings doing that. So I just folded a piece of tape and set that on there so it's really easy to lift off layer. So, on top of our purple paint, we're gonna go ahead and add some blue. If I can get my can shook up enough, there we go. Since I want this heart to stay out, or stand out really well in the night sky, I'm gonna add a little bit of white on it. I will add a little bit of black, okay. You caught me, I'll add a little bit of black. That's about all the more black I'm gonna add, just to, you know, differentiate the texture a little bit. And then we're gonna add some white. Now for this, I need a magazine sheet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna crumple this up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna lay it where my heart was, smooth it out, and then peel up. And I honestly think that turned out pretty awesome looking. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and re-add our heart back on it. I wanna make sure to get some of that texture everywhere. All right. It has been done. So since we're gonna add some like little ground texture and stuff later, I wanna go ahead and add some blue and purple. So here's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be about in the middle, so I'm gonna add just a general idea that I can work with later. And since this is gonna be reflected, I'm gonna make sure to kind of taper a little bit because I'm gonna have a sloping ground texture going this way. And since I want the reflection of it, I wanna try and mimic it. Like I said, it doesn't really matter because this is just a general idea, but every little bit helps. Okay, probably good. And then some blue. Okay, same rules apply. Try to keep everything as light as you can. It's a little bit difficult with my purple because it wasn't really wanting to spray, so. Now with our black, Remember to make sure to spray down because you don't want any black going underneath your stencil. So just burst around. Basically just drawing around the stencil. And since we're going to reflect the heart later too, I'm not spraying, you can't see it because it's held portrait wise, but on the other side of the painting, we're not going to cover up anything down there until we go to you know, do our heart reflection down there. Keeping this extremely light, and then cover up our ground textures a little bit. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Gonna add some purple and blue to the sky. Now obviously when you go to reflect this later, you're not gonna be able to mimic everything perfectly, but the reflection is just there to give the idea that it's reflected. You don't need to have your trees perfectly reflected. You don't need to have the heart perfectly reflected. Just do the best you can. And now to make our heart really stand out, go and grab the white, spray mostly on the heart stencil. That one, when we lift this up, that heart is going to really stand out. Okay. Lastly, we add our stars. And the reason why I always add stars last is because you don't want to spray your stars down and then add the colors on top of it because it's going to change the color of your stars. You might like that. I don't know. <laughs> flick the big blobs off to the side and then just flick onto our canvas. I'm going to add just a few more. I think that's good. Right. This is why it's important to add this flap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one to stick. Will it come off? <laughs> well, we have a fight on our hands. Okay. I did have to use a palette knife just to pry up the edge on it because some of the paint did stick to this, so it made it stick canvas a little bit. That's why it's good to have palette knives on hand for something like that. That turned out really cool looking. I'm really happy with how this is turning out so far. So, I'm going to peel up our ground texture. I'm going to spray some clear coat in the general area where our ground texture was. Okay. Take a magazine piece. So, I'm going to do our like little cliff technique. I'm actually going to turn this on its side. And the cliff technique for peeling stuff up, this will keep it fairly uniform. If I can grab my magazine straight to right, right, there we go. Okay. So what I do, take magazine sheet, hold it by both corners, and do like a karate chop in the middle of it. And then we're just gonna, I'll show you. Kind of start in the middle. And then as we work our way towards the edge, widen out. thing to the other side. That will keep it fairly even on both the top and the bottom of this. And we don't need to worry about too much of the ground texture on the below part because that we are going to add a little bit of white to kind of make it look like water. Same thing, kind of do like a little karate chop and as you go towards the edge, widen out your hand. Gives it that cool little effect and it keeps it as even as possible. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna add some trees. Okay, so take my palette knife, gonna add a little bit more clear coat. Just in a general area. Okay. Now when I go to do trees, I hold it pretty close to the end of the palette knife. And I always start at the bottom and use the edge. And then when I get more towards the branches and I want the branches to be thinner than the, than the base, I use more of the tip. That's what she said. Is that something she would say? I have no idea. I always like to kind of overlap my trees with whatever planet or stencil I have in the background. It gives that illusion of depth that I'm always talking about. Okay. I've actually thought about doing a tutorial on trees, on how to draw them, paint them with a brush, which in turn translates over to doing it better on spray painting. There we 
go. I'm actually going to bring down the trunk just a little bit. Okay, I like it. I just wanted to build out so it wasn't just like a straight rectangular trunk. And then I'm gonna take the flat bottom part of my palette knife and just kind of blend this in a little bit so it doesn't look like it's just stamped on there. good. Clear coat the other side. Do the same thing. Add a bit more clear coat up top here. So I'll make this a big old tree. There we go. I had a nickel for every time I had to do this painting, I could probably quit spray painting. Although, it wouldn't really make sense because I'd need a nickel to do this painting. And so I wouldn't be able to stop painting and you get the idea. Why is that not wanting to loosen up there? There we go. Remember, you're gonna to have to reflect this on the bottom, and even though it doesn't need to be perfect, it still needs to look somewhat similar. So the more complicated you make your trees, the more of a difficult time you're gonna have reflecting on the bottom. Okay, I like that. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of blend that in a little bit. Just so it doesn't look totally stamped on there. You can be as finicky as you want with that, but I'm gonna call it good there. So, we're gonna flip this baby around and then start on our reflection. Okay, so we gotta take our stencil, once again. And we're not gonna be able to get the whole thing, so it's about that far, so I wanna try and get it pretty close. Let's say about there. Take a black. Mark it. We're gonna do the same thing. Start off with purple. I'm gonna start moving a bit faster here because I think you guys have the idea on where I'm going with this. What's that? That's our clear coat. I don't want that. And a little bit of blue. Honestly, I don't think that black I used earlier really showed up that much, so I'm not even going to bother with it. Some white. Take a magazine sheet. Pull it up. Lay it on. Smooth it out. Peel it up. And I actually think that looks a bit wet. There we go. I don't want to have a repeat of earlier where it's stuck to it. So I'm actually going to move pretty fast here. There we go. Everything with black. You want to make sure not to cover up your ground texture so we don't need to cover up everything. And like I said, there is going to be some white spray there to really uh, kind of show that ground texture there. Good. Bit of pepper. I don't know what that French accent was, and I'm sorry if I offended any of my French viewers, but let's be honest, I probably don't have very many, if any, French viewers. Now I'm just kidding myself, because I am pretty sure I don't have any French viewers. <laughs> A little bit white. Like I said, I'm moving kind of fast on this, because you guys have the idea. Also, 
because it doesn't need to look as good. The main focus is going to be up above. You want to make sure not to get any stars on the other half of your already done painting. So, come on, don't do, don't do this to me. <laughs> Okay, I honestly don't know where this bit of orange came from. Weird, no idea. Okay, so what we're gonna do is the same thing as before. Clear coat. And then make our trees. Okay, so this one's a bit bigger of a tree and it goes all the way up to the top. So I'm gonna go like so. Got a fairly wide base on it. That's white. That's why you always check your paint off to the side. As I was saying, it's got a fairly wide base. And it kind of goes in the middle. Doesn't by any means have to be perfect. And let's face it. Knowing my luck, it is most definitely not going to be perfect. You know what? I think that looks good enough. We're gonna clear coat the other side and rinse and repeat. One doesn't go quite all the way up. Okay, that's pretty close. Blend that in just a little bit. You don't even have to do that, that's just because I'm kind of picky. Okay, let's flip this around. Okay, and the thing that really makes it look like a reflection. Okay. We're going to take our white. If I could get a little bit more organized here. Okay. Gonna take our white. Lay our straight edge as horizontal as possible. Spray mostly on the straight edge. Because you basically just want that mist. I'm going to spray a line going down. It's going to be like a shimmer line. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more white. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna try something a little bit groovy here. Add a bit of clear coat. I am gonna blend that water just a bit. There we go, guys. Some people might think it looked better, not blended. I kind of like how it turned out. It's not like a super overdone reflection, but you can still kind of see like the outline of it and stuff. I'll see what my client thinks. Maybe I'll make another one that's not blended on the bottom. I like it personally, but whatever. Uh, you guys try it however you want and let me know how it turns out. So as always, I want to thank you all for watching. And of course, I'll see you all later. But wait, there's more. Yeah, I actually ended up redoing this painting because I wasn't sure if she was going to like the totally blended bottom on it because the original painting was not blended at all. It just had the perfect reflection on it. So I ended up remaking this again using different colors and I also didn't blend the bottom part of the painting. But she actually liked the first one better where it was blended more. So it's all about personal preference on it. Some people really like it better as a perfect reflection. Some people like it blended because it looks like the water's flowing and it looks maybe a little bit more natural. 
Also, you can see that there's a lot more blue dominance in this painting, and that's not because I used any different colors. I still used all the same colors, but it was how I layered the paint. I used blue as the base color, and then purple on top of that, and then the white, as opposed to using purple first, and then blue, and then white. So whatever color you use first is going to be the most dominant. It's all about how you layer your paints. So I just wanted to add this little side note to let you guys know I did end up making this again and changing a few things and you can make a big difference doing just little changes. So as always, I want to thank you all for watching and of course I will see you all later.